Hello and welcome to my first tutorial. My name is Beth Pedler from Pedler Pet Portraits and Fine Art. Uh, today I'll be working on Fly. Um, I've currently been given permission to use him as um, a tutorial. So the pastel pencils I'm using are Faber Castell Pit Pastel, Conte Paris, Stabilo Carbothello, Karen Dash, and De La Rowney Artist pencils. I've probably pronounced all of those wrong. Um, so I'm working on pastel mat. Um, and I'm adding a layer of pan pastel. Um, so I use quite cheap tools because the soft tools I find I get through really quickly. I'm really hard on my tools. Uh, so I probably got these in a multi-pack from Amazon and they've lasted very well. Um, so I'm using brown pastel mat. This piece is around 18 by 24 centimetres. The whole piece is actually a lot bigger. Um, I'll be doing a double piece on this one, but um, the tutorial will just be a fly. So I'm going in dark. I always go in dark. Um, I'm using a mixture of black and blue pan pastel here. Um, there's no real art per se of getting this down. It's literally just an underpainting. So I'm just getting my darks in. If I see a, a hint of colour, so I'm adding a few blues here underneath, I'll add a few colours, but it's not the end of the world if you go a little bit wrong here, because the details go on top with the pastel pencils. So obviously I work from left to right, um, top left to bottom right generally, um, only because I find it easier, I work a bit like a printer, I, I find I smudge less. I do go back over occasionally if there's areas that I think need a bit more detail or need a bit more highlights or um, especially whiskers and things like that I leave till the end. Um, but generally yeah, work from left to right. I know a lot of artists start with the eyes um, and get the nose and get the details in first, that's fine. Obviously, if you're left-handed, you know, start from the left. Um, but, you know, if you're going back over areas, I'd recommend putting some paper down just to stop it from smudging. So here I'm using a, a black pencil to go over with the details of the eye, so around the waterline um, and with the pupils. Um, and then I'll go ahead and start adding some colour. Um, with pastels, I find it's easier to work dark to light, um, so I leave all of the, the shine and the watery parts until the end um, with a white pencil. And I always use a very sharp white pencil. If you want really white, I recommend going over with a sharp pencil and try not to blend it with the pencil, try and, you know, just literally just glaze over the top because those pigments will sit on top lovely. If you go over and over, you'll, you'll start making it muddy and you'll start mixing the, the white with the black and the white with the the orange there. Um, so I tend to try and sharpen my pencils really sharp for, for white parts. Um, I use a knife. Um, I also use a sanding block a little bit as well, but mostly just use a knife. <laughs> so here I'm adding those white white details. It's amazing how quickly it can come to life once you add those those final details. I find the Conte pencils are really rich um, and they're really good for, for really bright areas like eyes. So now I'm adding very slight highlights, I suppose you could call them low lights underneath the ear, just to give it that shape. And here I'm using a pastel stick. Um, I honestly don't know the make. I think it was Muggyo or Mungo or something. I threw the packet away years ago. I've had these since college, but any dry dry pastels, you know, would work. Um, I particularly like the stick because it comes out really, really dark. There's a lot of pigment in there. Um, and it really brings out those dark shadowy areas. 
So here again I'm just adding some fluffy bits with a really sharp pencil and then blending with my, my makeup sponge. I tend to use pencils around the edges um, just to really define the edges. Um, obviously you can blend them, I mean at the top right there it looks quite soft but in the picture it is actually quite dark on the top there. So here I'm adding a little bit of purple, I don't actually have any purple pan pasta, I think I ought to buy some because I keep reaching for the purple pencils. I find black fur is just full of different colours. I, I mean, I've already used black, blue, purple, grey. Um, later on, I'll be adding pinks as well. I'm just cleaning off my, my makeup sponge there. So now I'm adding some white pan pastel. It's really important to have a dedicated white pastel sponge because if you have any grey or any colour on them they do tend to go a little bit off colour. So you can see he's actually coming to life quite quickly even though there's not really much detail in this. Um, this is why I love pan pastels so much, um, they're just so quick. <laughs> I did used to work in coloured pencil um, but I found it quite a slow medium and I just do not have the patience for it. Um, I already started with coloured pencil and pan pastel underneath and it sped it up so much um, and then I decided to move on and, and try pastel pencils and I've fallen in love and I've, I've not looked back. <laughs> So here again, a little bit of pastel stick just to really darken up those dark areas to give it that contrast. And see, when I go back over those areas, I'm really taking care not to let my hand rest on the pieces that I've already finished. So here with the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel, I'm just adding a few strokes here and there just to pick up a few highlights because otherwise it just looks black and I want to make it look like fur. So it's quite a dark grey that one, it's just, just to pick up those little bits of hair. If you get it wrong you can always blend it back in with the Pan Pastel and, and try again. They're, they're so forgiving. So here I'm using quite a dark blue just to really intensify those darker areas. Black quite often isn't just black, there's, there's lots of colours in there. If you, if you want to really make a, give it some depth, I would recommend adding some dark blue. 
So here I'm using a paper stump. I discovered these recently and they are wonderful. I used to smudge a lot of um, pastels with my finger and I used to get absolutely covered in it. So um, these are really, really useful. Um, the ones I'm using are Derwent ones. Um, and they're just great for just softening areas and blending in. They're a really, really useful tool. Another very useful tool if you don't have one is a putty eraser. I, I don't find I use it so much whilst I'm drawing. I tend to use it more at the end just to lift off a few areas that I've, you know, I tend to blow my, my pan pastels off the page and they get caught. Um, and especially around the areas where I, I tape my, my paper down. Um, so it's quite good just for cleaning up at the end when you've finished. So here, Fly's got um, a little white stripe on top of his head. So I've waited until now to start adding that and I'll go back and go over that later. So between the black and the white areas, I tend to go go through with pencil because um, pan pastel it's, it's quite difficult to get a clean line, and you end up with a grey mess. <laughs> So starting here with the nose, I try and map out my areas so I don't lose the, the nostrils. I try and leave spaces so that I can see where they are. And as always, you know, get your darks in first and then you can go over after with lighter pencils and and get that shine, that wet nose look with the pencils after. So again I'm leaving those areas so I, I can map out where I am, I don't get lost, so I know where his lips are. Now, white fur is very tricky, um, especially when it's in shadow. And I find it's really good just to sit and look at your reference photo and try and work out what colours are in there, because often it's not just white. So obviously on top it's very white because it's out, you know, he's sat out in the sun and it's really bright. But underneath there's usually lots of dark greys and pinks and oranges. So I tend to get those greys and pinks in early and try and get it really dark um, and then I can also you know go over with my white pencils and really pick those highlights out once those darks are in. So I don't want to get too carried away here before I start adding the details of the eyes because obviously I'll end up smudging it everywhere. It's easy to get carried away and, and end up doing an entire underpainting, which is fine, you know, if you want to work that way. Um, but I do find I just get covered in it and I end up 
going out shopping after and I've got a black moustache because I've, <laughs> I've got pan pastel all over my face so it, you know make sure that you do cover it up So again, starting with a nice sharp black pencil, going in with my darkest areas first. There's definitely some blues in that pupil and I'm using oranges and pinks and browns. So I'm using browns around the edges, the outer edges, just to darken them up a bit. And I'm using lighter oranges in the middle, nearer the pupil, just to really make it pop. And then I'm adding my highlights again. So I've gone in with the grey this time because this eye isn't, the highlights aren't quite as bright. There are whites in there. And again, lots of pinks in there as well. Now it's easy to overwork an area, so I find if you're if you feel a bit stuck or feel like you can't quite get it right, just leave it. Go and make a cup of tea, go for a walk, leave even leave it for the day, and come back with fresh eyes, and you, you'll see what's missing or see where you've gone wrong. Um, So here I'm just adding some contrasts. I find it's quite good to go over areas with a dark pencil as well, just to really make the lighter bits pop out. And here obviously his little white white flecks um, I've left till the end because obviously layering with pastels you can put lights over darks. But this is the bit where it really starts to come to life. Those those little white flecks and those little Highlights are so important, they really bring him to life. He's really popping off the page now. All those little stray hairs, they're so important to add. They don't have to be perfect either. They don't, you know, you, your drawing doesn't have to look exactly like the photo. As long as he's got a few stray hairs in there, obviously you get the important ones in. I mean, his marking looks pretty like the photo. But whiskers and things don't have to be perfect. I think it's about, you know, getting a feel for the animal and having fun with it as well. It is a drawing at the end of the day, it's not, it doesn't have to be a perfect replica. So here I'm just marking out the nostrils and the little areas that are wet. Noses again, I mean the reference photo doesn't have the, the best detail I've ever worked from, um, so I'm only adding what I can see. And sometimes just, just a hint of those little highlights on their nose is enough just to make, make it look realistic. So again I'm using my pastel stick. 
to really get those contrasts in and to get those darks really, really dark. Notice how his fur really has that kind of sheen now. So I think the tonal values are just so important. And again, getting those nostrils and those shadows nice and dark gives it that really 3D effect. And then I'm blending them in a bit with my Chinese makeup brush. <laughs> I do really like the soft tools. I, de I definitely recommend using them if you haven't tried them before. But I am, I'm just so hard on my tools. They don't last five minutes. So these areas actually do blend into the, the white fur quite well. There's no hard lines here, so I'm actually using that blending between the, the white and the black with the sponge tool. And then I'll go over after with the, the white highlights. So here again, I'm just mapping in my darker areas around the, the collar and the clip. Doesn't have to look perfect yet. I do bounce around here a bit. I did find the the collar bit quite difficult. It's quite challenging. And sometimes it's good to just go back and work on a different area. So again, with the white fur, there, there is a lot of browns and oranges in there. It's not completely white. And some greys in the shadows. It's getting those tones right before you commit to putting your highlights in. And again, just adding those little white flyaway hairs and those little details that really just make it pop. Uh, see, I do still use my fingers to blend them in. <laughs> I've obviously noticed there's some pink missing here, so I'm adding some pinks. It's quite nice when you've nearly completed an area and you can kind of look over and just think, okay, what's this missing? And if you see a colour in there, whack it in. And with all those highlights, you can see how that's looking a lot fluffier now, rather than just one block colour. This is also an area where you can decide. So this, this client has asked me for the next dog if I can make her look less old so I can decide how many highlights to put in, make her look a bit younger. This dog's obviously quite young though because he doesn't have, have lots of grey hairs around his muzzle. Oh, 
put some warm tones in there just to lift it. I really like the Faber Castell Pit Pastel pencils. If you're just starting out and you're thinking about which pastels to buy, I, I de definitely recommend the Faber Castell ones. They are brilliant. The Caran Dash white is really white as well. If you can get that nice and sharp, you can get some fantastic whiskers. And the, the Stabilos as well, I really like for white highlights and whiskers as well. See how the underpainting, I mean, I'm halfway there already with the tones underneath. And it literally just takes a few minutes just to go over and add those fine highlights and fine details over the top. That's why I love pan pastels, because they just make the whole thing so fast. So I actually did this entire drawing in about an hour and 50 minutes. It's not a race. If you're slower, that's fine. Um, I'm just impatient. Um, and I'm not very good at slowing down. Again, really, really sharp. This is the Stabilo pencil to get those really fine highlights in. And here on this piece of metal, I, I go over and over this bit because I can't quite get the colour right. But when I get it right, I know it. Sometimes you do. It is trial and error. Again, this is where it comes in that, you know, if you are really struggling to get a bit, a bit right, then just, just leave it for a while and come back later. So here I can't actually read the address, so I've just added a few squiggles just to give the impression. And then again, going over with my highlights with my blender. I find the blender is really useful for things like metal, because you can just spread the pigment around without actually removing it. I find pan pastel so versatile. I mean, this bit looks almost completely finished, just with a few swipes of the sponge. And then just go over with some my white pencil for some highlights, and it's it's really coming to life here.
and then it's just a case of adding a few whiskers with a really sharp white pencil. Which takes a while to sharpen. <laughs> there we go, nice and sharp. And just go over and just add those little random hairs. It's really important to drag the pencil from where the hair grows from, drag it out to the outer edges of the page um, because then the pencil naturally thins off and it looks much more realistic than it would be to drag it from the other direction. And, and try and keep your pencils quite light as well when you're doing this. Those sort of hairs, they're not thick. And that's fly basically finished. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope it was useful. Please leave some comments and let me know what you thought of my first tutorial. Um, and yeah, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and I have a website, www.petthepetportraits.com. Um, and hopefully I'll be doing some more. Thanks for joining me.